the word dysphagia sounds really fancy schmancy, but what it really means is just trouble swallowing. Hey everybody, the word dysphagia actually means trouble with swallowing. I know what it's like firsthand to experience that. I also know what it's like firsthand to struggle with your voice and losing your voice when you're dealing with autoimmunity. Today, we're actually going to crack the case wide open. I'm going to go into what these symptoms really are, what the underlying causes are, and what are some real solutions that we have to deal with it. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, we are almost at 60,000 members in our Facebook community. And the Facebook group is called Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. There are tons of trainings and bonuses in there, and that's an incredible way to interact with me and my team in the Facebook group. My team will be putting a link below as well for you to join the Facebook group. Make sure you click the link and join the Facebook group. So let's first just kind of talk about what does having these symptoms look like? First of all, uh, let's talk about voice, right? So we have actually a lot of autoimmune issues that impact upon people's ability to speak. You can think about it as hoarseness. If you are hoarse mm -hmm. for uh, any time, like if you're constantly feeling hoarse, can that be related to an autoimmune issue? And the answer is absolutely yes. So hoarseness can be associated with it. Now, the other thing is some people can have swelling in this area, whether it's an underlying thyroid disorder, joint issues relating with the neck, connective tissue stuff that's going on. Some people just have a lot of swelling in the neck and that can impact on their ability to speak. Now, you don't have to lose your voice. It could just be more effort that it takes to speak. You know, my mom had ALS. We know more and more it's likely an autoimmune disorder affecting attacking muscle and nerves, right? So any of these could actually impact upon the muscle to speak. I noticed there's a lot of people with MS, for example, that the nerve, the innervation that it takes to actually initiate or speak can be hampered with muscle weakness. So they have trouble with speaking. So it could be trouble with initiating speech. It could be hoarseness. Uh, it can even be, by the way, dryness. How many of you guys have dryness in your throat? You're not making saliva um, or you're realizing that, you know, like there's such dryness that even when you speak, it makes you cough. How many of you are coughing and almost fighting through coughing when, as you're trying to speak? And how many of you know it's autoimmune related? Type in chat. And that brings us into swallowing. The word dysphagia sounds really fancy schmancy, but what it really means is just trouble swallowing. And trouble swallowing, so many of you out there don't even realize you have the problem. That's the issue. If you don't even know what the symptom is at all, you can't even speak or verbalize what that means to your doctors. Mm -hmm. So it, how it shows up in me, by the way, is I can't swallow pills. It's a really difficult problem for me to swallow pills. So I will take a pill and, and it feels like, I mean, I almost gag with it, but it gets stuck. Okay. How many of you have done that? Whether it's pills or food and that by the way, can be because there could be actually what we call motility problems, which means that it could be that there, the muscles that are lining the esophagus, we call that smooth muscle is not contracting properly because of autoimmune related issue with the muscle or the nerves. And then that way it causes the food to be stuck. So it could be actually a muscular problem in the esophagus, right? But um, again, dryness of the mouth or the throat, the mucous membranes being formed around here to lubricate food going down, major issues causing tons of symptoms with swallowing. So this is actually a really common symptom. Just last night, I pulled our mastermind call. Um, and out of all the people that was on the call, the participant in the program now, I asked how many people between voice issues or swallowing issues um, had problems. Over 40% of the people on the call raised their hand. This is not a small deal. This is a huge deal. And it's a huge symptom in autoimmunity that nobody knows about. I'm going to blow the shit out of the water right now. And by the way, I'm a big fan of the cursey words on things I feel really passionate about. So fair warning, everybody. This makes me mad. And, and the reason it makes me mad is this. There's a complete asinine lack of understanding in our doctors, specialists that are dealing with autoimmune disease. You go to a rheumatologist, they're the specialist in rheumatology, which has to do with the bones, right? Autoimmune attack of the bones. Here's the deal. All autoimmune diseases stem from an immune system that's mistaking parts of your body as a germ and is trying to kill it. If it's mistaking, let's say your joint as a germ, what's the likelihood it's going to mistake many other, other targets of autoimmune attack as a germ? 100%. And what is the likelihood if you have one diagnosis, I don't care what the heck it is, that you have hundreds of other targets of autoimmune attack and they're all related to your autoimmunity? And the answer is 100%.
we don't just have one autoimmune target of autoimmune attack. We have hundreds. So this, this is huge for you guys to understand. I don't just have Hashimoto's. I also have mixed connective issues, meaning I have autoimmune mm -hmm. attack against my connective tissue, which is in my neck and in my joints, in my neck, but also in my esophagus. Mm -hmm. This is why I have joint pain. This is also why I have trouble with swallowing guys. This is all freaking related. But yet the way that we segment the care and we have specialists, you see the rheumatologist, they don't know jack shit about your swallowing issues. They said, go see the GI doctor. You go to the gastrointestinologist. They're just like, we scoped it, looks fine. They're not the specialist in autoimmunity. And by the way, it's not even easy. Most autoimmune diseases cannot be diagnosed via a scope or with a blood test, okay? We don't even have the technology or the testing to diagnose it. The fact is, I don't care if you have a diagnosis of a specific disorder that causes voice or swallowing issues. I do know that 40 to 50% of the people I have dealt with over the last 26 years of my career have these symptoms and they are targets of autoimmune attack mm -hmm. and they can be helped and reversed. You're a hundred percent spot on because that's the journey so many of us have been through. So you mentioned you don't really care what the diagnosis is because you can fix the problem regardless, but it might be helpful just to talk about some of the diagnoses that are often associated sure. with issues around this. Yeah, let's do that. And that that's interesting because then when I start listing diagnoses, then people realize, oh, me too. But here's the thing. You go to all these just gynecologists, gy um, gastroenterologists, <laughs> hepatologists, pretty soon you're going to end up the psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not how many is can we get to i know and they you start feeling like that right am i am i losing my mind here so let's talk about it so we actually have autoimmune disorders that attack the connective tissue in the esophagus and the vocal cord there's connective tissue there so there's diagnosis like uh mixed connective tissue disorder which i have mm -hmm. undifferentiated connective tissue disorder i uh have -huh. right <laughs> Um, you have things like scleroderma. You have things like Crest syndrome, which involves trouble with swallowing. So there's these connective tissue disorders that actually actively are attacking actual vocal cord box and the esophagus. But then you also have um, these diagnoses that have to do with the nerves, the nerves that actually activate the swallowing complex or this voice box. So you're talking about multiple sclerosis. That would be nerves, right? You also think about myasthenia gravis, which is attacking the muscle receptors. Mm -hmm. So it's muscle. Myasthenia gravis will actually affect the muscles because myasthenia, the muscles can be so weak, you can't even swallow. People literally die starving to death. And that reminds me of Nympha, which is somebody that had myasthenia gravis in our program. She literally was, I think, 70 or 80 pounds and, and like that close to death. And literally two months later, she's driving, swallowing, gaining back her weight. <laughs> I mean, I know your eyes are like bulging out of you, but yeah. like, we literally have case studies after case studies of people with like MS, myasthenia gravis. Now let's go through a, a thyroid disorders. How about hormonal things, wow. right? So we got Hashimoto's or thyroid disorders affecting the neck. You know, people with Hashimoto's can have actually a lot of swelling in this area with their thyroid going in and out. There are people with burning mouth syndrome where the mouth really burns and then that can impact upon the swallowing. We have people with multiple type, different types of neuropathy. So that's autoimmune disease attacking nerves. So many different types of autoimmune diseases don't even have a name, but they attack nerves. And some people have a lot of neuropathy that really can cause the nerves that innervate the speech and the, and the swallowing complex to be disturbed. So lots and lots and lots of diagnosis. And a lot of people are like, I'm going to see an endocrinologist for my Hashimoto's. And yet they're sitting here dealing with like voice or swallowing problems. And the endocrinologist is like, oh no, it's not related. Let's go somewhere else. Let's scoot you to another specialist. And I cry bullshit on that one. Okay. <laughs> because it absolutely is just another target of autoimmune attack with which thousands of solutions exist. Right. Why okay. do people with autoimmunity get this so often? What is the underlying things that are feeding autoimmune disease? And every one of those um, pie pieces of the five pillars has something to do with these symptoms. I guarantee you right now. So let's talk about underlying root causes. In one of our pillars is the food mapping pillar. Okay. And just the food mapping pillar is not just food sensitivity testing, guys. And most food te sensitivities testing suck anyway. So food mapping is a big old ball of a process that I created. I trademark created that process because does food allergies, can they actually impact upon the swelling of this area? 
can it cause heartburn that's burning the shit out of this area? The answer is yes, yes, and hell yes. Can food allergies actually cause a war zone in your gut that's causing infection to take hold? And that infection is causing raw throat, heartburn, even vomiting. Well, believe it or not, having food sensitivities is definitely one of the underlying causes, right? And yet testing for it out there is literal crap. And so absolutely you need accurate blood testing that's personalized to you so you know exactly what it is. But number two, this ain't just the test. These tests can have a lot of false positive negatives. You need to understand what that really means so you accurately can deal with those results. Number two, it ain't just about food allergy results. What about digestion? So many of these issues you guys don't realize is digestion. By the way, at least 90% of people with autoimmune disease cannot digest their food properly. And that's an understatement, everybody. So let me tell you something. If you can't digest your food with all the steps down below here, what happens to the food? It doesn't want to move down even, right? Digestion is going to be king. And we actually spend tons of time in our program educating people so that they become powerful. They become powerful and they know that, oh, hell yeah, I have a digestion problem. And oh, hell yeah, I have choices on how to deal with it. And I know how to deal with this issue, right? So digestion, food sensitivities, autoimmune attack against the muscle or the nerve. That's not a hopeless cause. The whole point of the five pillars is, can you decrease or stop the attack against the vocal cords or the esophagus to then get the swallowing to improve or your voice back? You don't think I could do that? You don't think anybody can tell you that they've done that before? If you want to know how to actually stop feeding the autoimmune attack, the five pillars is going to go through each of them. And it's a complete list. So I absolutely recommend if you don't know what the five pillars are, you want to know what's feeding your autoimmune disease, put five pillars in chat. Check your messages, everybody who's commenting right now later. We will get those resources to you. Okay. Yeah.